Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Hello, Francisco. How are you? Hola, doctora. Hola. I'm fine. Perfect. I'm fine, doctora. How are you? Fine. How is the weather there? Uh, it's weird because yesterday it was really, really cold and today it's sunny. <laughs> Ah, okay. What time is there? Now it's 4 p.m. 4 p.m. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good. Uh, Francisco is in France. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, we can start. Francisco, are you ready? Ah, okay, doctor. I will share with you my, my presentation. Yes, please. <laughs> Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, this morning we have programmed uh, five presentations. The first one is in charge of uh, Francisco Javier Gomez Cano. Uh, other others are Odin Reyes Vallejo, Jose Juan Jonathan Díaz López, Doctores uh, Belumani Subramanian, and Abdelhadi Casiva. I think they are not uh, connected. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have audience, <laughs> presential audience uh, here, but I suppose it's because it's very early. <laughs> but uh, if you are ready, uh, okay, uh, Francisco Javier uh, Gomez Cano, who is the speaker of the effect of the oxidation degree on the bank up of graphene oxides by tour methods. Uh, Francisco and all the presenters uh, will have 20 minutes in total. Please try to free the time of the presentation at uh, maybe 18 minutes in order to have two minutes more for some question of the audience. Uh, Francisco, okay. please start. Okay, doctora. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Francisco Javier Gomez Cano, and I'm going to present to you my work, uh, which is titled Effect of the Oxidation Degree on the Bank Up of Graphene Oxides by Method Tour. The authors in this work, uh, we, we can see in this slide, and this work is presented in the category Nanotechnology, Materials and Applications for this International Conference. Um, okay. This is, a, this is the personal content of this presentation. I'm going to start with an introduction, uh, some backgrounds, methodology we use to, to synthesize our material, some results, and finally the conclusions. Okay, uh, as an introduction, it's important to say that uh, the two-dimensional materials in general have emergence like a good alternative uh, for exploring novels uh, in, uh, in unique properties in comparison with the other materials. That uh, this is an example of this is graphene. Graphene in different base materials have, um, have been intensely investigated due to their excellent optical, mechanical, thermal, and electronic properties in, in the wide range of applications. So um, recently, a new uh, carbon-based nano, nanoscale materials have emerged uh, providing an alternative pathway to graphene. Both examples are a graphene oxide and reduced graphene oxide. Graphene oxide is a graphene sheet uh, with different functional groups incorporated into the surface of this material. So these kinds of functional groups could be epoxy, hydroxy, carbonyl, or carboxy. So something really interesting with this material, as I told you, is that the bank up of, of graphene oxide can be modified by varying the level of oxidation in this, in this material. I mean, if we change the amount of these functional groups, we can uh, modify the, the bank up and other properties in this material. And this is uh, previously reported in the literature. Different authors in different works have been working uh, with this material. And as we can see in these both examples, uh, this both author uh, found a different band gap uh, from, for example, 0 0.1 until 6 electrovolts. And, and that is an interesting behavior. That is why in this work uh, we did, uh, we made a graphene oxide. Uh, the objective is was graphene oxide preparation with different level of oxidations. So in this slide, I'm gonna uh, 
talk about the methodology we use in this in this work. Uh, for this, we use a tour method, and this is because tour method is an easier method in comparison with others. So it's a quick method. We can obtain our material in around two days in comparison with the with the others. Uh, this method starts with a mixture of acid, this preparate uh, sulfuric and potassium permanganate. Uh, the relation we use it was Ni1. Graphite powder is added to a stirring mixture of acid that is still for three hours at around four, four uh, uh, degrees. And the step number four is really important in this, in this methodology because with this we can control the level of oxidation in our material. We add potassium permanganate for this work. We add uh, three different amounts. Uh, it was 0 0.5, 3, and 6 grams of this uh, potassium permanganate. Then a solution of water and chloridic acid uh, is added or was added uh, drug-wise. So the ionized water is added so on occasion to promote exfoliation of the graphene oxide layers. Centrifuge and wash with water as many times as necessary until a pH of 7 is reached. And final, a uh, dying anode at uh, 65 degrees for 12 hours. So as a result of this, we obtained three different graphene oxides. I mean, with three different uh, amounts of potassium permanganate. It was 0 0.5, 3, and 6. So from this slide, I'm going to show you some characterization with this for this material. The first characterization, it was a FTER. So in this slide, we can see a comparison between the graphite precursor we use and the three different graphene oxides uh, we made. So it's important uh, to say, or we can observe here that the, uh, we, uh, in the graphite structure, uh, the peaks don't appear in this, in this structure, uh, indicating, uh, so when we compare this graphite with the different graphene oxides, we can observe the presence of the different functional groups, like for example, uh, epoxide, uh, carbonyl or carboxyl. So this is a signal or this is an, it, this is an indicator of the chemical oxidation in our different graphene oxides. So in this other slide, I show you XRD diffraction for, for our materials. So we can observe a comparison between the precursor graphite and the, and the three same different graphene oxides with the less, oxi less oxidation until the higher oxidation. And in graphite, a, a sharp signal is observed in the graphite at around uh, 26 degrees corresponding to the 002 plane of the graphite. So on the other hand, uh, when we add uh, functional groups, we can observe how the intensity of this uh, signal of 002 plane decrease in comparison with the original precursor and at the same time appears a new signal at around uh, 15, 12, and this signal moves until less uh, two thetas. Uh, this is a signal corresponding to the 001 plane of the graphene oxide, being this an indicator of the oxidation in, in our materials. So at the same time, we can observe how the uh, distance, interplanar distance, increase uh, in comparison with the graphite, in comparison with the uh, graphite, uh, in comparison with the different graphene oxides. And that is why, because uh, this is a, a, a image, a light, for example, we can observe how the different functional groups are introduced in the between these layers. The, uh, that, that is why the distance, this distance is interplanar distance, increase with the level of oxidation. Other characterization uh, with it, it was a Raman, Raman spectroscopy. In comparison of the Raman spectra of the precursor graphite of the graphene oxide, in graphite, uh, the presence of a strong GPAN at around uh, 1,500 is, is attributed to the double bond carbons uh, stretching, while the other band G, D band, uh, we can observe a D band at around 1,300, is attribute attribute to the presence of defects in this material. So in graphene oxide I shift of the graphene uh, the of the D band uh, toward higher wet numbers was observed. So this being attributed to the formation of the more sp2 states because of the functional groups in these in these materials. So uh, likewise, a change were observed in the deep band uh, since because the incorporation of the more oxygen groups, uh, its intensity decreased and the signal uh, broadened. So at the same time, we can observe how the relation 
uh, between ID and G, ID and IG band uh, increase. And this is because uh, the, the different functional groups uh, are uh, taking more places in this, in this structure. So other characterization we did, it was XPS. And XPS, uh, it's important to say that uh, we, we can find two, two intensities, two main intensities in this material. We can find an intensity at around 284 uh, electron volts. This is corresponding to the carbon double bond, uh, carbon carbon double bond, or I mean sp2 states. While the other intensity we can find is uh, at around uh, 286 uh, electron volts, and this is corresponding to the sp3 hybridation. So in this case, we can observe how uh, when, when we did the, the convolutions in these, in these different uh, materials, it was possible to observe the presence of the epoxide, carboxyl, and carboxyl uh, groups. And that is a signal of we are obtaining, a, we are incorporated a, correctly or different functional groups to, the, to this material. So these characterizations, I mean uh, XPS and, and XRD, help us to know the level of oxidation in our material. There's an equation. This equation we can see in this slide. It's important to obtain the level of oxidation in this material. For this, it was necessary to obtain the intensities sp2 and sp3 uh, in XPS and the intensities in XRD uh, corresponding to the intensities to the graphene oxide in graphite, I mean a 001 plane and 002 plane. As a result of this, it was possible to obtain a, the oxidation degrees according to the amount of potassium permanganate. And we can observe how, yeah, in effect, a, we can increase the level of oxidation a, if we modify a, the amount of potassium permanganate, and this is a, a, the level of oxidation we obtained. Uh, the first graphene oxide was for uh, 10, the second it was 49, and number three was a uh, 53.9%. Uh, so fine, almost finally, uh, we calculate uh, to the bank of these different materials. So it, it's important to say that uh, in this case, uh, 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 we observe how the bank of increase according to the level of oxidation. So why, I mean, uh, if we increase the level of oxidation, we are going to obtain a, a, a more uh, a high bang up. And, and, we, and we can observe in this case two, two lines in each, uh, each plot. And this is because due to the amorphous nature of non-uniform uh, oxidation level of graphene, a sharp oxidation age was not obtained. So we observe following bang ups range from a, 0.87 until 2.18, observing a gradual increase as a function of the oxidation degrees. In graphene oxides, due to the many functional groups, the symmetry of hexagonal lattice plane is broken, and many of these carbon in the lattice change from having sp2 to sp3 hybridization. Therefore, the generated bang up is so large that the material becomes to a semiconductor or an insulated material, as we can see, we, we can see an example here, here in this, in this image, how these uh, uh, sp2 states change to sp3. That, that is why it's possible to modify this, this bang up and other properties. So as a conclusion of this work, the first conclusion is was uh, we, we have successfully synthesized graphene oxides uh, with different oxidation degrees uh, by resulting, uh, regulating the dosage in 0.5 grams until 6 grams of potassium permanganate during the synthesis by the Tor method. Other conclusion we obtained, uh, it was the analysis performed and low to know how the material changes structurally uh, as oxygen is gradually incorporated. Uh, furthermore, with this study, we proved that the bank of, of the graphene oxide can be increased at higher oxidation degrees, going from the semi-metallic uh, to semiconducting until uh, uh, actually we can find uh, more bank ups with this, with this material. And finally, this opens the possibility to adapt in their, uh, their properties depending on the applications to be for or incorporated them into another material as a part of the composite to improve the joint uh, properties. Uh, that, that's some acknowledgement. Uh, thank you people who, who have posted these different characterizations. 
And uh, thanks. Uh, thank you for your attention. That's all for the moment. The presentation first, and then we pass to the, the questions. We have time to make a lot of questions. <clears throat> okay, I don't know if someone from the people who is connected online. Hi, Francisco. Uh, hi. Nice, uh, nice presentation. I have questions uh, regarding on your optical results. Like your band gap calculation, no? Okay, okay. Can you use uh, yeah. slide number 30? Yes. So you, uh, here, how did you calculate the band gap? By using top, plot, or? In, in this case, the calculation we did, uh, it was with a Kumelka Monk, Kumelka Monk, I don't know if the pronunciation is correct, Kumelka Monk method. Uh, for this, it was necessary to obtain uh, the reflect reflectance in our powders at the beginning, and then we follow the procedure to, to obtain these band gaps. Uh, so in this case, it was uh, interesting at the beginning because we find uh, we found two two lines in this in this material, and we were we were checking the these results in comparison with other materials and other authors uh, consider a. Uh, a match with these uh, two bangles appears uh, because of the amorphous naturum and not uniform oxidation level of graphene. I mean, uh, maybe in the material we have some sections with more oxidation and other sections with less oxidation. That uh, different authors uh, say the same, and maybe that is why we obtain two bangles. Uh, okay. They uh, the here, like in your graph, in your graph. The alpha yach nu square is in zero, no yach axis value, like while you're cal calculating the band gap. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, I couldn't see the y axis zero. That's why, like, uh, maybe it is better, no? Like, you can so, like, we can see, like, okay, this is the band gap value, no? Mm -hmm. And also, yeah, I can see the mu, yach nu there in your uh, graph. Mu looks like you're like a sub, uh, it is not like yach, uh, what do you say? It's, uh, uh, new is not big, no? I don't know, it's, uh, it should be yet new, no? But new is like little bit down. Can you see in your graph? Uh, so, sorry, uh, I, I, I didn't listen to you. I, 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 I listen a sound. Yes, in your graph, uh, like in the x-axis is yet new, no? But uh, in new, that um, energy value the year, symbol is like a, is, uh, it's not showing parallel, no? Like a uh, new is uh, sub sub value of the yes. There's like a yes, a yes, b something. But mu should be like uh, like a yes, no? Like bigger. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I don't know. Means uh, it's, uh, it's showing like a little bit small, like symbol, just symbol, not other thing, just symbol. Okay. In your graph. Yes, it's like yes. New should be like a like a b like this, no? Not sub. Uh, plan constant, because you are showing the, the, the yeah, plan, uh, constant, plan constant and the, the, the new the the frequency. Mm -hmm. It appears as sub index, no? Sub index in both in the vertical axis and the in the horizontal. Maybe it's a mistake, no? Of typing, of typing yeah. error. Okay, okay. That's is is more the. Okay, I, I, I will check. Yeah, I th thank you for, for the observation. I, I will check better the, this information because, uh, yeah, I, I, I maybe there's some a mistake. Th thank you. Mistake, yeah. Thank you, Francisco. Uh, more questions from the, the online audience? No, 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 no. There are no hands here, no. Uh, Francisco, uh, regarding the, the yes, I have a question <laughs> regarding, uh, regarding the same uh, observation that Ashok made uh, in the in the uh, talc plots. Uh, I don't know uh, why you don't uh, write the scale, the values of the in the vertical axis 
because yesterday uh, uh, Odin present similar calculations. Mm -hmm. He forgot also put a, a scale. Why is not presented in this plot? Why? Uh, maybe, Doctor, in this case it was a mistake. Yeah, it was a mistake because, yeah, I um, I mean, I was uh, checking some different articles or many the experience. Uh, I checked in some articles and I didn't see the, the scale and so other articles and I saw the scale. Uh, maybe it was a mistake and it, I think it's... Yeah, I think it's important to show it because uh, okay. You are saying that you are using the extrapolation, no? Uh, yeah. To this mm -hmm. class, no? Then uh, we can see the zero, no? In the vertical axis. Okay, uh, finally, have another question. The formula that you are presenting in the slide uh, 14? Yes, yes, yes. In order to determine the, the oxidation degree. This formula is reported uh, in the reference of Jan. Yeah, yeah, doctora. In this case, uh, this. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, he, he uh, was uh, the first person who reported uh, this equation uh, to calculate uh, a number, uh, a specific number with the oxidation degrees in, in these different materials. And different authors from this uh, letter uh, start to use this, this equation to calculate uh, the, the bank up. But in this case, the reference I used, it was just the first, because he was the first article I, I found with this equation. The time is finished. We thank uh, very much the, the presentation, very good presentation. And we thank and greetings from, from Mexico to France. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank, Thank you, Dr. Thank okay. you. Okay, next speaker is uh, Jair, uh, Jair Antonio Melchor Robles. He's connected. Yes, yes good morning, okay. everybody. Okay, can you share us uh, the presentation? Okay, and can everyone hear me? Yes, yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, Jair Melchor Robles uh, is presenting the, the talk uh, entitled the effect of the oxidation degree, no, 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 sorry, no, no. Nanostructure, nanostructure films of um, pentoxide of bismuth and selenium deposited by, by pulsar uh, laser ablation. Uh, if you are ready, uh, Jair, you can start. Remember, no more than 20 minutes, please. Okay. Uh, good, good morning, everyone. My name is, is Jair Mechor. I am a student in the doctoral program in nanoscience and nanotechnology. I will present uh, one more time the work entitled uh, Nanostructured Films by Dismuth Selenium Pentaxide, deposited by, by Putzel Laser Ablation. Uh, the working group is uh, in, the, in this slide. And uh, the content of the presentation will a, a brief uh, introduction, methodology, results, discussion, conclusions, and acknowledgments and reference. Uh, the introduction, as we know, the electronic industry massive generate products based on semiconductor materials. For example, we have the reduction in the ground of sectors such as smartphones, PC, table and tablets, automobile sectors, and other. And based on the problem uh, identified, it's necessary to carry out a uh, research uh, related to the synthesis, characterization, and evaluation uh, of new materials uh, for the semiconductor industry, uh, functional materials with economic techniques. And one of the fields uh, that is currently of great interest is calcogenite materials, which are rare earth, sulfides, selenides, 
and oxide of calcogenides. Uh, and the number of, uh, of the investigation of different systems based on calcogenides has increased recently due uh, to versatility that it present for the development of different application. Uh, this, uh, the, the, these materials present the theoretical uh, variable band gap between 1.1 to 3.5 uh, electron volts. Uh, it's important to study new semiconductors materials to satisfy the current demand uh, we are facing. Uh, now, now the study of calcogenides materials is of great interest due to the application in solar cell waste to head utilization and pollen degradation. Uh, the interest of of this work is to develop of new new materials, novel functional materials obtained by means uh, of simple techniques. The study of the physical properties of the, of this material will allow to develop of new application in the form of powders or deal films. Based on the above, in the present work, nanostructured dimethyl selenium pentoxide dim films we are synthesized the, by deposit pulsed laser ablation using a, tag, a target made from dimethyl selenium pentoxide powder synthesized by solid cell reaction. Uh, also, the results uh, of the structural, morphological, and optical characterization of the of the films are presented. This is the experimental methodology. Uh, this is a general process. Uh, first, uh, we can see four points. The first point is the synthesis of the material was performed using the solid state reaction technique uh, with a planetary milling. Uh, we use selenium bismuthium trioxide reagents from Sigma Aldrich. We are used as precursor uh, ground of for eight hours for, for 400 uh, revolutions per minute. Uh, the, obtain, the, the point two is the obtained powder we are waiting in on uh, analytic balance and then place it in a mechanical dye to to make a target and obtain a mechanical stable target. Uh, uh, the point three is uh, the deposit of the dim films by pulsar laser ablation was carried out in a vacuum chamber at pressure of five uh, millitor and 1064 nanometers laser. Uh, the target substrate distance was 16 millimeters. The deposit time was five minutes. Uh, after the deposit of the films, uh, we studied different temp treatment temperatures were used, and, and it was only possible to obtain the phase of the material at uh, two different temperatures, 550 degrees and 600 degrees Celsius for 60 minutes. In the point four, we, uh, we can see the figure one show the photograph of the films obtained by pulsar laser ablation, and we can see the we can see the transparency present in the in the sample. Now we continue the, with the results. Uh, the structural characterization uh, by X-ray diffraction revealed the characteristic diffraction pattern for the bismuth selenium pentoxide. Uh, the material annealed at 550 degrees and 600 degrees Celsius present a orthorhombic crystal structure with a preferential orientation along the 231 plane. Uh, the crystal size was calcul calculated by with the Scherer equation. Uh, and the values was the 30 to 200, pardon, 30 to 20 nanometers, respectively. Uh, and the insert B, we can see the, the bismuth 
selenium pentoxide orthorhombic structure and the insert C we can see crystallographic plane 231. The morphology of the samples uh, was analyzed by scanning electron microscopy. Uh, the figure three show the morphology morphology of the films obtained by by anil at 550 degrees Celsius. It can be seen than the homogeneous, homogeneous surface formed by intercalated layers of nanosheets uh, with an average thickness of 53 and an average length of 400 nanometers. Uh, the film annealed at 600 degrees Celsius in the figure four is the show 35 nanometers thickness nanosheets. We can see in the insert uh, the figure three and figure four, the insert uh, letter I and letter C, uh, 3D design of, of the nanosheets that make up of the films. The surface of the films was also analyzed by atomic force microscopy. The surface of the samples, the bismuth selenide, the, the bismuth selenide pentoxide to 550 degrees Celsius, uh, present a branch height of 180 nanometers correspond to the maximum height, height of the nanosheets with, with a average roughness of 50.2 nanometers, evidencing the samples has a texture based of nanosheets. Uh, in the figure six, uh, we can see the, the system exhibit uh, starting plates uh, with average dimension of 150 nanometers, evidencing that the thermal treatment fragment uh, the nanosheets. The optical characterization was performed by UVBIS spectroscopy and the figure 9 and figure 10, we can see the transmittance spectrum of, of the films deposited by pulsed laser ablation. The measurement range was 200 to 1000 nanometers and average transmittance in the visible spectrum was range of from uh, in the region of 40 to 70 percent can can be observed, which is uh, associated with the opacity of the material. Uh, the sample straight, uh, the, the sample present transmittance border in the visible spectrum near to 350 nanometers, and using the 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 Tauk method, uh, obtain the obtaining the band gap of 3.3 electron volts to the sample annealed at 550 degrees Celsius and 3.7 for the samples annealed at 600 degrees Celsius. It's evident the, that of the two spectral obtained, the sample threat at 600 degrees Celsius present a sharp border showing a, a better quality in, in the sample. The band gap values are close to those reported in the literature. In the figure nine, show the electron diffraction patterns of the synthesized samples obtained by high resolution transmission electron microscopy. It's observed that that patterns correspond to polycrystalline material. Uh, with the uh, structure, the bismuth selenium pentoxide with pedal number 96810905. Um, finally, the conclusions. Uh, the transparent bismuth selenium pentoxide dim fins were deposited using the pulsed laser ablation technique on soda lime glass substrate with a thickness of order of 250 nanometers 
and the dean field present an orthorhombic structure and preferential orientation along the the 231 plane located at 70.9 degrees uh, the The bismuth, the, the bismuth selenium pentoxide sample treated at 600 degrees Celsius present a band gap of 3.7 electron volts calculated by Tauk method and the transparency more than 70% in, in the visible spectrum region with absorption border near to 330 nanometers. And after the thermal annealing at 550 and 600 degrees Celsius, the material show a nano sheets like morphology with a average thickness of, of 53 nanometers. And as the temperature, the heat treatment increase, they collapse forming the uh, heterogeneous surface with uh, nanofilaments. And the nano sheet slides have uh, average height of 200 nanometers and roughness of 50.2 nanometers measurement by IFM. The influence of the roughness in the films is associated with a uh, higher transmittance. Finally, based on the band gap values obtained and other general properties in films can be adequate for its use in the fabrication of diverse semiconductors device for photocatalysis application or probably for for gas for gas sensors and finally uh, we appreciate the technical support of your simvestap co-workers and the economical support received by conacit and any reference using this work and Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you very much for your presentation, Jair. Uh, now we have time for one, two questions. Yes, Ashok, please. Hi, Jair. Hi, Ashok. Good morning. Good morning. Nice presentation. I have uh, some doubts or questions regarding your conclusion. Can you go to the conclusion? Here in the here uh, in morphology same images you mentioned here average thickness is it like a, a grain size or something? See, is the is the thickness of the the sheet uh, nano sheet? Okay, that okay. The nano sheet in the slide in the slides in this slide we can see in the three D is the design the the thickness. So you have also uh, done the uh, cross-sectional uh, analysis. Uh, thickness means like a grain size, not like uh, the seed size of the from the images, right? Yes. Okay. And another question is, which one is your best condition? Uh, between the 550 or 600? In the best condition is for the sample annealed to 600 degrees Celsius, but in, in, this, in this spectroscopy, we can see the better quality of the material. The, the border to is, is very sharp in comparison with the, the other sample. Yes, yes. Thank you, Jais. Thank you, Asok. OK, any other question from the online audience? No, no, there are no hands. OK, then in order to, to recover the, the time that we lost at the beginning, we tend to Jair the presentation and we finish here. Thank you, Jair. Thank you.
Okay, next speaker is Karina Gutierrez Ojeda. Are you ready, Karina? Yes, it's connected. Hello, Karina. Yes. Okay. Now, the work that is presenting Karina Gutierrez Ojeda. Eh, bueno, firstly, Karina Gutierrez Ojeda eh, is from the National Institute of Astrophysics, Optics and Electronics. This is an institution well known as INAOE for us. In a way. Okay, uh, let me present to Karina. Uh, the, the, the title of no? this work is Effect of the Thermal Annealing on the Photoluminescence Properties of Bilayer Arrays of Silicon Dioxide and Titanium Dioxide Nanospheres and its application as down conversion layers in silicon solar cells, arbore silicon solar cell. Okay, Karina, if you are ready, you can start, please. Can you put in the presentation mode, please? Uh, we are we are seeing the presentation, but it's very small. Uh, what is the problem in this case? He's, he's projecting from his phone. Ah, okay. Are you using your uh, uh, phone cell, Karina? Karina, uh, please uh, turn on the, the microphone. <coughs> Please share us the, the presentation. Uh, I think that I have shared my my presentation. Uh, a ver, let me let me share again. Because he's sharing the the phone. Can you hear me? Hi. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, but the, the um, presentation is not available. I think that I'm sharing my, my slides, but I am not sure if okay. you can see. Try again, please try again. Be calm. Okay, I'm going to start.
I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, yes, we can sure. hear you. Okay, okay. Sure. Yes. Thank you, thank you. Sorry, sorry. Um, but we, we can see the presentation, eh? Okay. Okay. Um, how I say, uh, we can find different uh, cases in the nature when we can, with, with the science try to make a mimic of the, this, uh, this kind of, of material. Um, they use uh, new te this, uh, this mimic to apply in, in, the, in the technology. And depending on the phenomenon, it corresponds the design, the structure. Please, Karina, uh, I, I suppose you are, uh, you have started your presentation, but we can see the, the presentation, please. Mm, you can see the presentation? No, no, no yet. We, we don't see, we don't see the presentation in, in online. Ah, Francisco, you, you... No, 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 but it's not possible to see the presentation online. Ah, okay, 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 we also can. Can you see the presentation, please? Karina, try to share the, the your equipment again. Are you using a computer? Hello, Karina. Can you see the ice cream? But you are using your phone? Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, in, okay. In a second. Okay. No, 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 but it's not possible to see the... We can see your screen, but we cannot see your presentation. Maybe you can share again your presentation or click the presentation, your presentation, please. Okay, that's a shame because I think that I was... Sharing my uh, gosh. <laughs> you can click here. Share, share, share. share. Yes. Can you see my slides now? Okay, yes, yes, yes. No, it's okay. But uh, did you have an opportunity of uh, use a computer instead of the phone? Because we now we can see, but it's uh, in a small format. Uh, please advance, advance your presentation. Yes. Ah, okay. Yes, yes, yes. It's okay. It's okay. Now it's okay. Then, uh, please, now you have uh, just uh, 10 minutes for your presentation. No, please, you, you have to hurry up. Yes? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, depending on the phenomenon, it corresponds to the design of the structure or we want to describe this process. And there are some morphologies that we uh, try to make a mimic, like uh, nanowires, nano spins, nano holes, nano cavities, and there are, and however. And there are some, the, this structure are too complicated to fabricate with different methods. And so um, it, it, as a consequence, an application in technology can rise the, fabric, rise the price and it is no a good option. Uh, for another hand, in recent, recent years, the use of nanoparticles and different semiconductor materials of the man, uh, uh, materials for the manufacture of solar cells and in the era has been investigated, and this with the this with uh, the intention of producing more efficient solar cells with lower costs associated with the production compared to conventional silicon solar cells. No, 
so so is so uh, it is the case of the some words where they are working on the imitation the light capture as for example with the leaves uh with the leaves do uh how we can see in this uh in this figure where they are uh, using a uh, different um materials uh, different and spheres of different with different materials and dimensions to improve the uh, the cap the, the light captain uh, with the intention after to be applying on solar cells and uh, in as um with the intention to capture the light and increment the efficiency of the in the of the solar cell no? So one of the one of these consequences of the use this kind of nanostructures in this case nanospheres is um, that it could be used in different angles and the process uh, of of using these nanopart these nanoparticles are more easy to apply apply on the solar cells. No, okay. Well, the the way that the nanoparticles work is the way the upper part of the nanoparticle is focused and guide the the incident light inside the structure. The lower part is with uh, the lower part part with the regular irregular shapes maximize the scattering of the copper light, improving the light uh, the light uh, collection. And for this purpose, uh, in our experiments. Uh, we use uh, silicon dioxide nanoparticles and titanium dioxide nano is the particles. Um, with these nanoparticles, uh, we use uh, two different uh, arrays. And we try to study not only the optical phenomena, we try to find and we try to study the, the photoluminescence properties under a different condition in our case uh, thermal conditions so uh, so far uh, we can see the how i say um this kind of nano nanoparticles they act like a light trapping and it is a work that other other research uh, have shown and um, a we want to work with the photoluminescence properties uh, with the LDL, with these the electric materials and see how it is changed after to thermal treatments. Uh, it is changing the photoluminescence properties. Uh, so for this, uh, for this, our aim is perform an experimental study of the photoluminescence properties of silicon titanium nanoparticles. And then it's to different configuration of nanoparticles layers, applying thermal entertainments to nanoparticles to encourage an improvement in the photoluminescence emission intensity. And then uh, we can see uh, we can see the morpho morphological change of the nanoparticles after these uh, thermal treatments, and we apply these best results over uh, solar cells. So in our experiments, we use uh, nanoparticles of silicon dioxide with diameter of the six, 600 nanometers. And also we use uh, titanium, titanium nanoparticles in their, in, the, in their routine phase. And the, the, di the diameter of these nanoparticles are 100 nanometers. Uh, we receive these nanoparticles and a as a collusion, colloidal solution, and then we dilute uh, these nanoparticles uh, in this. We can see in the future uh, in in three in, in in two concentration. One is a one to three, another in one to four, and um, one to two for the. Uh, for the titanium dioxide nanoparticles. Okay. Uh, our, our first uh, method to make the position nanoparticles, the, the position is with the spin coating. Uh, the intention of this to use this method is because it's easy and also we can obtain a, a monolayer of the nanoparticles. 
with this, we can generate, we can deposit the nanoparticles in two different arrays. But we can see the first is titania silica bilayer, where the 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 bottom the the bottom layer is a uh, monolayer of titania nanoparticles, and the upper layer is the silica nanoparticles. And then the second array is the opposite case with the first layer or silica nanoparticles and the top layer and titanium nanoparticles. We can see the difference visually as in this feature and where we can identify visually by the colors the each nanoparticle layer here and each nanoparticle configuration. Okay, and in our experimental details also we can see that uh, this, uh, this configuration were subjected, uh, were submitted to Thermal um, to thermal uh, temperature parameters. For example, when we try to fix the temperature, in our case, uh, for example, uh, we modify the the temperature in our case. Uh, our case uh, from 400, uh, 400 Celsius degree to 1,100 Celsius degree. And um, then we deposit uh, this, um, these nanoparticles on the solar cells, how we can see in this region, and the array of this, uh, the final array of the solar cells with the nanoparticles are as, as, are, is as um, this figure, where we have in the bottom metallic contacts, the P-type, N-type, Anti-reflector layer that it is the structure of the the solar cells and the bottom the nanoparticles B layer. So in our results we can see in the preliminary results is the behavior of the nanoparticles um, only with a same image with and um, it is a result. It is for the 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 silic the titania silica configuration and it is the silica titania configuration is deposit. And we can see there the plot in this plot um, the photoluminescence uh, intensities for each array. The the black line corresponds for the titanium silica configuration. In this code we can see the maximum intensity is below to two two thousand uh, unit arbitrary uh, arbitrary units and the second a line the, is for the, in the red line corresponds for the spectra for the silica titania configuration, and we can see first that there are two peaks. One of these is in both cases are located. The maximum, the, the first uh, maximum is located in 400 nanometers, and there are a second peak in, that is located in between seven and a eight hundred nanometers. It is before the thermal uh, thermal treatment, but after when we apply the different uh, pro uh, thermal thermal process, we can identify this. The we fix the temperature. The, we sorry, we fix the time uh thirty minutes. And we change the temperatures, and we can uh, and we increase the temperature, and we can see how, as we increase the temperature, we can uh, change the photoluminescence emissions, and the maximum peak emissions change from the four four hundred to eight hundred nanometers. And it is the, for example, this corresponds for the titania silica configuration. But what happened with the other the opposite configuration? We can see that we, if we increase the photo, the the, the temperature, the photoluminescence emissions uh, is is fixed everything in eight nine, eight nanometers. So we can see that the uh, with these arrays first that the arrays uh, of photoluminescence the arrays. Of the configuration, the nanoparticle configuration can modify the photoluminescence uh, behavior. So, uh, for this case, uh, uh, in both cases, in both cases, uh, for our intention to apply in solar cells, 
uh, we can see that the best array correspond for this, this behavior. Uh, it is for the titania silica, nano, uh, nano, titania silica configuration. On this, we will use uh, on, uh, to apply on solar cells. Then uh, we apply a, this configuration, the titania silica uh, over, so, uh, the, over solar cells. Um, we can see and uh, do, 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 do response. For example, when we have a solar cells uh, without, uh, without, without any entertainment, we can uh, identify that the, the red and the black line corresponds when the solar cells don't have the nanoparticles and it is, uh, it is the raw solar, uh, raw solar cells. But when we apply the solar cell, uh, we apply the nanoparticles over solar cells and apply the thermal treatment uh, for um, 400 Celsius degree and 10 minutes, we can see that the, um, the current density is increased. And it is seen in with a red line. And for example, when we apply this same configuration also, but with different time, uh, we can see also to the, the efficiency and the current density of these solar cells has been increased. Um, for example, we can see in the black line, it is a solar cells without nanoparticles and the red line corresponds a solar cell with the nanoparticles and thermal treatment. We can see the increase of the difference of the this uh, current density and the, the change of efficiency of the solar cells with these nanoparticles. But what happened with change or increase the temperature on um, 30 minutes? We can see the same result. The, we have uh, the black line corresponds to solar cell without any, any nanoparticles. And when we apply and deposit the nanoparticles over solar cells, we can increase the current density. And we can see the current, increase, uh, current density increase is the, in, this in this value. So, but we have uh, initial doubts about the, if really the nanoparticles are interacting with the, with the solar cell to increase their, um, with the efficiency of solar cells. So we try to uh, study um, the solar cells uh, only with thermal annealing, but with no nanoparticles. So uh, we can see in the black line, we can see the, the initial uh, initial uh, characteristics uh, of uh, solar cells, and then we will apply, we apply thermal treatment at uh, 400 Celsius degree for 10 minutes, because that is correspond the last parameter with the nanoparticles. We can see that the current density is damaged, is decreased, so it is no good. And after when we is the same case. We measure uh, solar cells without any uh, thermal and without, without any nanoparticle. We can see this line, but after when we apply the thermal treatment, we can see the nanoparticle. We can see that the the current density is decreasing. So, two minutes, please, Karina. Two minutes. Yes, I will finish with it. Uh, we can conclude that this, 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 the next ideas, um, the characteristic, the characteristic uh, photoluminous emissions of the titania silica and silica titania nanoparticles configuration uh, was enhanced by thermal treatment, and our results show it that the order in which layer were deposit modified the photoluminous emissions. Uh, we observed that the silica titania bilayer nanoparticle configuration had a layer emission and that the titania silica nanoparticles inhibition after thermal process. Um, for the silica and for the silica titanium nanoparticle configuration, uh, the maximum P emission was shifted shifted from 400 nanometers to 800 nanometers as the temperature was increased. Um, 
the titanium silicon and particle configuration show it a uh, shifting of the maximum photoluminescence emission from 400 nanometers to 800 nanometers as the temperature was increased and an in process at 400 Celsius degree and 500 Celsius degree for 10, 20, 10, 20 and 30 minutes produces uh, the optimal photoluminescence emission of the nanoparticles. Also, we found that uh, we found that the 43 percent of the solar cells that we studied uh, increased their current density approach uh, by eight percent by eight percent in average uh, when the nanoparticles were used. Uh, for the rest of the samples, there is no uh, an enhancement in their performance characteristics, and it is necessary to to repeat and do more research about the annealing temperature in, in solar cells of uh, titanium silicon and the particles configuration with uh, to find a uh, best results and apply in future works. And thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Karina. Uh, it's a very interesting work, but sorry, we don't have time for many questions. Uh, no. No, sorry, we don't have time. Thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you, Karina. Okay, next speaker is Antonio Alberto Antonio Espinosa Peyrot. Yes, good afternoon. Okay, okay, please share the presentation. Then, uh, Alberto Antonio, you are the speaker, right? Alberto Antonio? Yes. Yes, okay. Uh, this work is from the uh, Universidad Veracruzana, Mexico. The title of the work is Simulation of a Square Diaphragm. A substrate for nanostructured beam fields on their wire acoustic transducers. Okay. Yes, uh, excuse me, it is already. Uh, we can see. Uh, the presentation. What is your question? If it is already showing on the screen. Yes, 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 yes. It's ready. It's ready. It's okay. Okay. Thank you. you well, start, uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, my name is Alberto Antonio Espinosa Peirot. We are. I am working currently with uh, Luis Alberto Castellanos Rivera, and we are going to present simulation of a square diaphragm a substrate for nanostructured thin film on the water acoustic transducers. The six uh, topics that we are going to talk about are the introduction, a brief literature review, the methodology that we followed, uh, some results and discussions, and the conclusions. Uh, for the introduction, we have been analyzing how uh, different sensors are implemented to uh, capture sound underwater. So there are two main divisions. One is omnidirectional sensors, and the one that we are watching on the screen, vector sensors. Vector sensors have the uh, difference regarding to omnidirectional sensors that they are they, they are able to uh, obtain the direction where the sound where the sound is coming from there are different approaches to build a vector sensor an acoustic vector sensor uh, the four that we have found is inertial ones that use the uh, transduce transduction material uh, with some accelerometer. In this way, the sensor is able to measure two different variables of the uh, acoustic sound field. Another one is mass flow, where this uh, sound field produces changes 
in temperature that can uh, suggest where the sound is coming from. Then uh, vibrational mode, uh, they analyze how the sensor will behave depending on the direction where the sound arrives. And finally, MEMS sensors. These uh, kind of sensors use mainly two transduction mechanisms. One is capacitive readout. They uh, convert the movement and displacement of a platform, a substrate, uh, into a capacitance or directly piezoelectric transduction. This, uh, the deformation of the material causes, uh, creates a voltage in the material or, or, or a charge displacement in the material that can be measured. And in this way, the sound is transduced from the, the mechanical structure to an electrical signal. Uh, for this application, we were uh, reviewing how the sensors are designed. The first part of the design process of a sensor is to understand how the substrate will behave mechanically. And in this way, we can uh, understand what will be the dimensions of the substrate that we have, we, we will have to use in order to use uh, some uh, transduction mechanism. Uh, it could be, as I mentioned in the previous slide, a capacitive readout or a piezoelectric uh, transduction mechanism in order to convert the deformation of the substrate into a voltage that can be used in the frequency range of interest. The human uh, hearing uh, is between 20 hertz and 20 kilohertz or the acoustical frequencies that, that are considered in that range. But uh, above 20 kilohertz, there are a lot of applications that can be explored. In this case, we are uh, focusing the research in uh, capturing sound from uh, any uh, mechanical device that is in the surface of the sea. Normally, the ships have a frequency sound that is between uh, 500 or 80 kilohertz to almost 3000 kilohertz. So we were able to identify that by simulating the substrate of the material that we want to use, we can obtain at what frequencies the sensor will work. Uh, in this case, we are uh, uh, presenting four, five uh, references that did, did this kind of analysis in order to understand how the substrate uh, changes the frequency of the sensor in order to be more sensitive at that particular uh, frequency. The methodology is start the sensor design. Uh, if the frequency has been identified, then we have to decide what transdu transduction mechanism are, are we going to use. If the transduction mechanism has been identified, then we can uh, decide or define some sensor dimensions, geometry and materials. Then we can model a substrate structure, simulate its mechanical behavior, and analyze if the simulated frequency approximates the decided frequency of operation. In case it does, we have to continue with the sensor constructions. Uh, for this model substrate, uh, uh, for modeling the substrate structure, we use a cloud-based platform uh, called Onshape that is available online and gives some uh, a student uh, license and. For simulating the mechanical behavior, we use the software OnScape. The limitation that these cloud services has is that they don't offer the option to simulate a fluid structure interaction that is uh, basically the main part of our research. Because once we uh, study how the sensor behaves in vacuum, we have to understand how will it behave 
uh, submerged in a, a more a, a fluid with more density. In this case, uh, normally the frequency tends to uh, to change because uh, the viscous effects, the damping of the fluid, and the loads that are applied to the substrate while it is immersing in the fluid. Uh, as I mentioned, we use the the computer aided design closed based software on scale, where we built uh, four different uh, configurations of the sensors. Uh, we were trying to understand how the dimensions of the sites change the will change the frequency of the of the sensor. We st we simulated uh, a squares of 20 millimeters per 20 millimeters, 10 per 10, 15 per 15, and 5 per 5 millimeters. And we uh, vary the thickness of the materials uh, between 0 0.117 millimeters and 0 0.254 millimeters. We also uh, change uh, the, the simulation, uh, the material of the simulation, we simulate PET, stainless steel, and alumina that are the some of the common substrates that, that we have uh, on hand to build the sensors. After modeling the sensor, we uh, in, in, import the geometry to the on-scale software and did define the frontier the, the the conditions at the at the at the borders of the sensors in this case we uh, selected that the four edges of the square diaphragm are going to be fixed in order to simulate how the structure will deform under that condition When we did that simulation, we were able to identify the first 10 resonant modes. In this case, uh, one of the main uh, variables that we have to consider when we did the simulation is to understand how much mass will uh, participate in each of the axes uh, along which the sensor is deformating. In this case, we are interested in analyzing the deformation along the, the, the C axis. In, and in this axis, we obtain the bigger deformations with the first and the sixth resonant modes. So we select those resonant modes to understand, uh, to, to uh, take them as reference to select the best configuration of dimensions and material that will work near the resonance frequency that we are looking for. As we can see in the table, uh, the substrate, in this case PET, is uh, able to resonate uh, below uh, 20 kilohertz for almost all of the configurations. When the size of each square diaphragm is 20, 15, 10, and 5 millimeters per side, we obtain frequencies of operation or the field resonant mode below 20 kilohertz. So we selected, uh, we, we determined that the best substrate for the construction of a sensor working under 5 kilohertz will be the 20 per 20 millimeters uh, sensor. We graph that information uh, in the x-axis. We are presenting the dimensions of the square diaphragm. And in the y-axis, we are presenting the resonance frequency obtained for the first resonance mode of each of the different sensors. In this way, we were able to uh, select the 20 by 20 millimeters uh, sensor made of PET as the substrate that we need to use to deposit nanostructured material that uh, works under the piezoelectric transduction mechanism. 
So the first resonance frequency of a 20 millimeters per 20 millimeters uh, made of PET vibrating in vacuum and without considering damping effects from a fluid structure interaction is 0.84 kilohertz. Is this PET substrate produced the lower frequency response when using the sensor of a, as a square diaphragm, and it was possible to identify that the deformation of the substrate occurs near the central region of the diaphragm. Uh, this is another important consideration because uh, the piezoelectric transduction mechanism that thinking of using depends on how much is applied to the substrate in order to produce the uh, correct amount of, of, of the bigger uh, quantity of uh, transduction to uh, current, to, to voltage, sorry. So this was our analysis for this sensor. And we want to thank uh, the chiefs and leaders of the research group in the Universidad de Veracruz, our principal investigator, Dr. Andrea Lopez Martinez, uh, our PhD advisor, uh, Julio Tinoco Magaña, and a Master in Science, Samuel Alejandro Hernández Zamora. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your presentation, uh, Alberto Antonio. Now, uh, if you have questions, please. People connected online have questions? No? Yes. I have yes, one uh, questions or something. How, how we can relate this uh, work with the practical work? How you, uh, how you can correlate it? Uh, excuse me, I, I, I hear it very... Like, this work is like, uh, you said, based on simulation, right? Like you theoretically, you have done, right? This work. Uh, excuse me? I didn't understand what, what you said. Can, uh, like this, how you can correlate this work with the practical work, like experimental, mm -hmm. like experimental, you, how you can utilize? Oh, okay. oh okay. okay. We are going to cut the PET substrates to the particular dimension simulated, and we are to deposit a oxide zinc nanostructured layer over the substrate in order to uh, test the resonance frequency that, that will uh, give us the bigger response in the sensor, the, the bigger sensitivity. We have to deposit an uh, electrode over the PET substrate, then the, ox the zinc oxide, and a second electrode over the oxide layer, and then uh, expose the sensor acoustical field under uh, controlled conditions, maybe in an anechoic chamber will be the best uh, way to test it and prepare the sensor for underwater testing. And we will test the sensor in an underwater anechoic tank to uh, connect the simulation with a real application uh, and experimentation. More questions? No? Uh, yes, in the. <coughs> I have a question. So in, this, in the same sense of uh, a shock, is, uh, is your plan to make the experimental work about this project or is only the, the, the design, the simulation? No, it, it is my plan to do the mental work. We are, uh, we have just deposited the signed, uh, the zinc oxide over a pet uh, uh, covered with ito. So we are analyzing how to build the second electrode and test the sensor in air and then underwater. 
Okay, okay. If there are if there are no more questions, we thank to presenter this nice. And please uh, give uh, many regards to advisors Andrea, Tinoco, and Samuel. <coughs> yes. yes. Thank you. Yes, they are part of our family here at at Simestar. Yes. Thank you, thank you. Thank okay. You. Thank you, thank you. Okay, uh, now we have recovered the time, I think. No. Okay. Uh, the last presentation uh, of the of this session, uh, I forgot at the morning to mention that this uh, session is uh, nanomaterials and applications. Uh, the next uh, presentation uh, is the last of this session and is in charge of Jose Juan Jonathan Diaz Lopez. He is also from the National Institute of Astrophysics, Optics and Electronics, Mexico, in Aue, in Aue for us. Uh, he is presenting the the work uh, entitled Influence of the Composition of Glass Substrates on Methyl Ammonium uh, Lead ide Idiot <laughs> uh, Films Properties Deposited by Spin Coating. Uh, methyl Ammonium Lead Iodide. I, I don't know how is the pronunciation of this. Compound is a pair of skid, no? It's a pair of skid. Okay. Please start if you are ready. Share, okay. share the presentation firstly. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Beatriz Montaño. Uh, this ah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Eh? Sorry. Okay. Oh, then the speaker is Beatriz Estefania Montaño Flores. Yes. Uh, this is okay. a work uh, from Jose Juan. Uh, in, it's a collaboration of the staff and in our institute. Uh, in okay. The, uh, I will present uh, one a brief. Uh, we, can, we can see we can see the presentation, uh, Beatriz. Oh. Please try again. Okay, thank you. Sorry for my mistake. The presenter is other person. Because normally it's the first author, no, of the work. In this case, it's the second. Uh, you can see no. No, no, not yet. No, no. We can see your screen. Okay, you, you can see my screen. Okay. No, 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 no. no. Oh, yes. Okay. No, you can see. No. Ah, okay, the screen, yes. The screen, yes, but not the... Hello? No? Um, I think you know, my uh, network is uh, low. Okay, maybe you can uh, restart your the application. Maybe restart, restart the. Uh, Doctor, uh, sorry, yeah. I I already had the presentation. This presentation, I don't know if I can share it if she's agree. She, she agrees. No, no, no. We can see. <laughs> yeah. We can see neither. Now, now is she's having problems. 
Wait a moment. Ah, no, no, doctor, but I mean, I, I have this presentation. Uh, you have, you have the presentation? Yeah, yeah, because I'm co-author in this work too. Uh, uh, I don't okay. know if you agree, I can share this presentation. Yeah. Maybe yes, but then you have to move the slides. Okay, okay, if she agree, then don't. Yeah. I'm sorry, yes, okay. Okay, okay I mean, yes, I wish I Yes, certainly, there are many others. Yuri Kodriacep. Uh, the others are Jose Juan, Jonathan Diaz Lopez, Beatriz Estefania Montaño Flores, who is the speaker, Francisco Javier Gomez Cano, Iván de Jesús Ornelas Cruz, Yuri Kudriacet, Ismael Cosme Bolaños, y Svetlana Marusova. Javier, are you trying? Francisco Javier. Can you see the presentation? Ah, okay. Está bien. Está bien. Okay. No, we can see it. Eh? We can see. Okay. Okay, okay, now it's okay. Then now try to be uh, attend no, to the to the rhythm of the presentation. Then please Beatriz, go ahead. Uh, you can see the presentation? Yes, 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 now it's okay. Oh okay. Um... Okay, uh, well, um, this is the... Please, 10 uh, minutes, 10 uh, minutes, please. 10 minutes. Okay. okay. Uh, well, good morning. Uh, I want to present uh, this work. Uh, it's a collaboration from Simbestap and in our institute. Uh, the second slide, please. Uh, in introduction, I want to present uh, one... Uh, sorry, in content, I want to present one, a brief introduction to an approximation process of perovskite film film story, the results uh, which include the characterization of the films. Finally, the conclusion. Next slide, please. Uh, in introduction, uh, perovskites take uh, the general chemical formula ABX3. Uh, uh, this material can do the, the vanga by changing chemical expression in either of the places of the perovskite structure. Uh, the common types are A, are uh, organic or inorganic cations like methylamine. The B site is typically occupied by lead or anti X site is usually occupied by uric uh, bromide. Um, the hybrid perovskites have resulted in a vertiginous increase in energy conversion efficiency, more than 25%, demonstrating great success absorbing percent. Uh, anyway, uh, besides, uh, uh, they have a direct bank gap in the range of 1.24 electrons, depending on their composition. Uh, there are several uh, fundamental issues that need uh, to be addressed for their commercialization, including the type and quality of traits. Uh, in a previous study, it uh, was found that the presence of alkali metal oxide that the corrosion of the glass surface started before, accompanied by the ionic exchange between the ions, the glass, and the absorbed layer. Uh, the, next uh, the next layer, please. Uh, the goal of this work is to compare uh, mapping films added by film copy, different borescape glass substrates. It is hypothesized that the difference in the elemental composition is substrate will influence the quality and characteristics of the deposited film, allowing better uh, reproducibility. Next layer, please. In 
Uh, the things investigated in this work were, were elaborated the net experiments. The things were deposited by thin cotton gland glass strips with one inch per side, an accumular mixture of high purity precursors by methyl ammonium urate, lead urate, and BMSO in precursors by one steep process. 60 microliters of matte ink were thin on the substrate at 4,000 RPM and after five seconds was dropped 200 microliters anti solvent chlorine and a subsequent thermal annealing, then evaporation and rapid precipitation. Uh, in the table, uh, you can see four different substrates uh, that, that were used. Uh, Boarding Eagle 2000, 7740 BK7, and 1737F, so, whose is shown in the table. Uh, the principal difference between these substrates are the concentration of thick metal oxide. Uh, borum and uh, aluminum, and the concentration of alkali metal oxides, sodium and um, acid. Uh, there are no alkali metal oxides, 1737, and equal 2000 glasses. Uh, next, uh, layer, please. Uh, the, the, for the characterization, the structural part was observed by scanning electron microscope an atomic force microscope method, the compositional by secondary ion mass spectrometry, X-ray diffraction patterns, and finally the optical by UV disc absorption spectra. Next layer, please. First, uh, to investigate uh, the effects of the different substrates, the morphology, SEM, and AFM was accomplished. We observe flat substrates and average ground size between 80 and 250 meters in all of the food. The grains of zinc deposited in 1737 and BK7 substrates are less well defined, presenting dark pores, average thickness 50 nanometers, 8 nanometers respectively. Uh, as is well known, hydrogen support the uh, on other hand, with the 7740 substrates, the grains are bigger and better defined. Uh, we, uh, we obtain an average thickness of average grain size of 6 nanometers, uh, while the Eagle 1000 substrates uh, show poorly defined grains and lower degree of precipitation, uh, with average thickness of an average grain size of 18 nanometers. Next layer, please. By X-ray diffraction, the influence of the substrate over crystal structure in phase of matte films was analyzed. The XRB spectra <coughs> a characteristic matte perovskite intensity were observed at approximately degrees and 27 degrees, zero and two respectively, being consistent with values literature for uh, there are a secondary phase uh, of meteorite corresponding to 001 plane, metric decreasing or decreasing depending on rate. In, in eagle, uh, in blue line, and 7740 in green line, the uh, substrate, a decrease was observed. Uh, the values of the crystallized size and plane are shown in previous, uh, where the crystallis presents a size between 37 and 48 nanometers, and the strain increasing beca because of the presence of that urite size. Uh, next layer, please. Uh, uh, finally, uh, the fields was characterized uh, in the fever light range and in the near infrared range. In the left figure, uh, we see that the films are hydro-transparent infrared and less reflective in the visible range. Uh, with the corning uh, 1737 substrate in black line, 
The homogeneity and the grain size of the perovskite film played an important importance. This then attributed the difference uh, between the which which it was deposited. Next layer, please. The film's analysis uh, showed that the main film composed uh, carbon, nitrogen, hydrogen, iodo layer are evenly distributed at the same thickness, except for the 20 nanometer thick surface layer, uh, which occurs uh, most probably after absorption of glass gas molecules, the atmosphere, uh, primarily water molecular, uh, and a portion of oxygen, as well as sodium and potassium, is added, uh, also addition of Takes place. Uh, how you can see um, in line. And finally, uh, the conclusion in the next layer. Um, there was no interdiffusion between the glass strate and the perovskite films for all samples analyzed. Happy elements were conically distributed in the depth of the for a thin mere surface. A crystal, a, this is a, a mistake. Um, the, the crystal uh, size of the film deposited on Eagle 207740 and BK7 are in the 46 and 47, while the 1737F substrate present a size, a size of 37.6. The thickness of the substrate. Uh, the obtained film depends on the thickness of the substrate, uh, and the best substrate option was forming 7740 because it presents a light size values among the largest, as well as very defined grain. Okay, thank you. Sorry, the microphone is off in, in that in Ashok. Doctor, we can't hear you. Doctora, no escuchamos. Eh, doctora, disculpe, no escuchamos. Está apagado su micrófono en la sesión. Okay, we take the presentation uh, <coughs> of Beatriz, Beatriz, and Beatriz, uh, yes? Ah, okay. Yeah, okay. Go to the uh, recent, uh, recent one day, the end of the presentation. Uh, uh, please, if you can, nine people have questions. Please, your hands, no? Here? Anyone? Anyone have questions? Don't be speaking. No? You heard? I don't know if you heard. Now, now we can hear you, Doctor. Ah, okay. Then you didn't hear me? Previous? Uh, no, not really. Not really, Doctor. Ah, okay. Because we think the presentation of Beatriz. And I ask you the, if you have questions. First, uh, people online. 
Do you have questions? No? Please you lift your hand if you have questions. No? Then here? Okay, here we have a question. Please, Ashok. Hi. Beatrice. 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 Uh, what is the thickness of your, the samples? Can you hear? Yeah. Uh, the thickness is between uh, 40, 4, 480 nanometers and 500 nanometers. And uh, which, you, uh, how many samples you have? Like, uh, can you go back uh, your extra day? Sorry, I can't. I can't. I can't. Results? Yeah. Yes. So here, uh, you you have mentioned that uh, you know, four samples. No, which sample is your best sample? Uh, Francisco, please put the the slides of the X-ray. Ah, yeah, doctor, uh, this is the slide. I don't know if you can see them. But here, here is. This is uh, XRD. Ah, okay, okay. Ah, okay, okay, yes. The some equipment is okay. In the, the saloon, no. Okay, please. Based on your like, characterization techniques, which uh, techniques are your best results? Which uh, condition, best condition? Uh, okay, um, the best condition is uh, for the 7740 subscribe uh, okay. because uh, all the films uh, uh, have the same uh, conditions for fabrication. Uh, so, yeah, the, the substrate is determining uh, for the quality of the film. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Beatrice. I have a very short question. In the in the composition analysis, you are detecting some groups. Uh, why not uh, make the the analysis for the elemental, the the lead and the iodide? Why the interest of detecting the the groups? the molecules and not the, the individual elements. Why? Uh, yeah, uh, it's because in, in, uh, in the last work of, of Yuri, uh, they found two uh, sodium ions uh, uh, usually in, in contact with uh, water vapor uh, tends to uh, Make a ionic ex exchange uh, uh, between a uh, water vapor and sodium ions, and this contaminates uh, the layer of perovskite uh, structure uh, because uh, uh, well, it's, it's now it to atoms and molecules surrounding can easily diffuse in perovskite structure. Uh, but uh, 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 please, uh, sorry, sorry, but we uh, I, I was talking about the seams analysis. The profiles correspond to the molecules, no? And not the elements. Why? Okay. Well, um, well uh, in in our work in in our uh, 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 they are working. Uh, the doctor Spetlana is working uh, on characterization of MAPI films. Uh, so uh, they they form to well uh, they uh, measure uh, diffusion like. So they found to the presence of sodium ions uh, could uh, um, uh, uh, them, uh, uh, interfere in the measurements of diffusion layer of the properties of MAPI films. So they, they once uh, found a better substrate uh, for this kind of measurement. Uh, so for this kind of application, uh, it's important to know this uh, sodium, uh, uh, this kind of elements. 
I don't know if if I will. Okay, it's okay. It's okay. Thank you, at least. Uh, and thank you. Are there more questions here? Or online? No? If you don't have questions, well, we want to thank the presentation of the speaker, Beatrice. Okay, and with this presentation, we have finished this session. Uh, at uh, one o'clock, we have a, the last session of, the, of our symposium, Solid State Materials. Uh, I want to uh, uh, acknowledge to thank the presence of the of the public here and the audience on, who is connected online. Thank you very much for attending. Thank you very much. And see you at one o'clock, please, if you can. Thank you.